Hey, Bobby here with Coder Founder. And I was on Twitter the other day and I saw a tweet from The Code Man, and his first name is Stefan here. And he wrote this No one tells you this, but IHTB Client Factory and .NET isn't about performance. It's about not exhausting sockets and killing your app. Did you learn this the hard way? And then responds, I did. And I was thinking, does everyone know this? Or is this still some secret knowledge inside of .NET? So I'm running down the hall here and talk to the instructors here at Coder Foundry. And I said, hey, does everyone know how to instantiate HTTP client these days? And they said, 100%, Bobby, everyone knows this. Don't make a video on this. And then I looked through the responses here in the tweet and I thought, maybe everyone doesn't. Maybe we live in a bubble and we have knowledge that we've acquired over the years because this has been around for a long time. And maybe it's time for someone to come out and set the record straight and show you how this could happen and the problem with it. All right, so let me show you real quick what I'm talking about. So this is an app that I wrote that uses the TMDB API. And it's just pulling back a movie poster here in a movie. Very simple. And I'm giving you this, this code here. You can go get the link from the description to get up below. And let's look at this code real quick. And I've got a couple of services here. The TMDBA service wrong. This is the wrong one, and this is the right one. So when you go look at it, you'll you can compare the two. And you can see in this service here. And so let's go over what it, this really is. This is a server side application that's making an HTTP call from the web server to some third party source. In our case, that's TMDB API. This could be a microservice that you set up. It could be any type of service that's not on the web server that you have in order to get to it, you got to have an HTTP client to fetch the data from it. And so what would be real easy to do and the mistake that you could make is write some code like this. You could write an HTTP and say new HTTP client. Now, when you do this and you configure the base address and do all these things and you call it, it a hundred percent will work. In fact, in development, you may never see the issue come up. You may even get through QA. Will it get through a code review? Depends. Maybe you don't do code reviews, but it gets to production. And then the boss calls and says, hey, man, the web server's down. What happened? You know, it's three o'clock in the morning. You're like, just reboot it. That's normally what I do. I just reboot it when things go wrong, right? And that's not really a solution. We're, we're better than that. So we can think about like, what is happening when we look at code this way? Well, really what's happening is there is a connection pool and you can think of it like a pool of connections. And a web server has a finite set of these. It doesn't have an infinite amount. And when you do it this way, those connections do not get destroyed in a timely fashion. Now, sometimes garbage collection come around and manage it. And under certain loads, this may work. But most of the time when you get under load and it's not very high, this will cause you to run out of connections. So the next person comes there, tries to serve up a TeamDB client, and you get an error like, connection already in use or connection refused and your service goes down and this is bad so what do you do can you not use http client does dotnet suck oh there are ways to do this so let's look at the proper way to do this so we're going to look at this service here this is the the correct way to do it and really the magic takes place in the program cs and this is the when the web server starts up our program cs allows us to configure an HTTP client. And you can see here, I'm getting my TMDB API key from my environment if I'm running a production and also may have it in my, you know, my secrets or whatever on my, my local machine here. But the real magic is this line here, builder services add HTTP client. And if I mouse over his, this, it says it adds a client factory. And this was what St Stefan, the code man, was talking about, is that you need to use a client factory and not an HTTP client. If you instantiate a client factory, well, guess what? Then you get proper handlers, you get proper lifetime of your connections. It'll create them, it'll destroy them on time. And so you won't run into this ugly problem when you say, hey, the web sockets are already in use. I don't have any more sockets. I can't make a connection. Your app is effectively down. And so this allows you to do this. Now, what this is called in .NET land is a typed client. This works also with, with name clients, but this is a typed client, meaning that this type, our TMDB service, is injected with a client and we can configure this outside of our service. So we don't have to write all this configuration code inside of our service. And it's another benefit of doing typed clients this way. 
And when you come in here and look at it, you can see here, this is an HTTP client and I don't do anything. The factory is serving up a client each time this thing is created. And when I make a call here, it's making sure that all of the connections, the pooling, everything is handled correctly. So you don't run into that ugly, ugly problem of writing it the wrong way. So in short, this is the wrong way. Don't new up an HTTP client inside of a server app or a desktop app for that matter. If you have a desktop app that's doing it, you need to use um, the client factory. And if you're on a server side app like this, you inject it with your program CS using add HTTP client. Anyway, I hope that helps. Maybe it's 3 a.m. and you're trying to figure out why your server's down and maybe I've saved you. If I have, leave a comment below. If you already knew this, leave a comment below, but I hope I've helped. Good luck and keep coding.